welcome to episode seven of the DC Community Creator Q&A series. I'm Mark Wade, writer of World's Finest, Superman, Batman, Shazam, Kingdom Come, and a ton of other stuff, and you got questions. Let's go. The Real Detective Chimp says, firstly, I'd like to say that you are my favorite comic book writer of all time. Let's just stop there. Quit, cut. Um, what is your favorite comic you've ever written? It bounces back and forth a little bit, but I would have to say Superman Birthright. Uh, that is my love letter to Superman, as you can probably tell. He's you know, the main guy for me. And that book holds up really well, I think. Alexander Knox goes on at length to say, your work presents a clear vision of what you see Superman to be. But with all the classic heroes, the man of tomorrow has been interpreted and reinterpreted by a wide range of authors with their own idea of who Superman is. Out of all the very takes on this character from the last 85 years, which do you find to be the most compelling version of Superman in comics or other media that stands in stark contrast to your own vision? I would say the current uh, Superman and Lois show. Cool costume. Thanks. My mom made it for me. Because I, I come from a place where the marriage is still new to me and I'm still trying to work out in my own head how that how that works for me is my understanding of Superman being married. But I think that what they do with it, and I think the stuff with the sons, is really compelling. And I, I really enjoy that show. And he's very good as Superman, and really good as Clark Kent. Hub City Question wants to know, if you haven't been following them since the Silver Age, how does somebody get into the Legion of Superheroes? And what do you think is the key to their specific appeal? Jesus. Um, <laughs> um, the the key to their appeal, the key to the Legion of Superheroes appeal, is you got to think of them as the uh, the Knights of the Round Table of the future, right? The King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. They are they are people from different planets all come together with different abilities to work together for the United Planets to create a common peace. Uh, the best place to get in at this moment, I would say, would be Brian Bendis's work with Ryan Sook. He did on the on the miniseries not too long ago. Uh, that is our current interpretation of the Legion, and I think it's it's pretty open to newcomers. I think it's pretty open to uh, people who are not terribly familiar with the characters and can leap on there. I think it's a pretty good jumping on place. Ro Harper wants to know, your run on Flash created many characters and creations that changed the Flash mythos even after your time on Flash. Did you have any idea how much of an effect your run would have on Wally and the Flash Mantle as you were writing it? I had no clue. And all writers will tell you the same thing. We are just keep our nose to the grindstone, we keep our heads down, and we hit that monthly deadline, and we hope for the best. And every once in a while, you get lucky, and you're hitting solid doubles, maybe a triple, but then every once in a while, you hit it out of the park. And with the Wally stuff, especially with the Speed Force, which I give co-credit creation all the time to Brian Augustine, who was my editor and best friend at the time, uh, who helped me develop this stuff. That was simply a question. That was simply, okay, he can run faster than the speed of light. What do things look like on the other side of the speed of light to, to the Flash? And that just sort of opened up a bunch of other stuff and realizing that Jay Garrick's origin doesn't really make a whole lot of sense compared to Wally's origin and Wally's and Barry's origins are the exact same by some incredible coincidence. So what do we do to take the coincidence out of that and make a pattern out of it and turn it into something? So no, no clue that this stuff would go on to fuel so much stuff, but I'm very happy. Every writer in comics wants to be able to do something that has legs and outlives them and is carried forth and put into the mythos forever. It just feels really good. CK Comics, looking through your bibliography, I noticed you have written a lot of origin stories. This is true. What is the most important part of writing an origin for a well-established character in your opinion? Remember what they want and what motivates them. That is the most important part and it should be unique and it should be interesting. Uh, what motivates Batman obviously is the murder of his parents and trying to make sure that that never happens to anybody else. You know, what, what motivates Green Lantern is conquering fear on all levels. There's just, you can boil the character down to one or two sentences and then build it back up. The other most important part is to go back to the source. Go back to the earliest stuff that really worked and you don't have to be completely beholden to it, but you need to 
look to the author's intent to begin with. What were Siegel and Schuster really trying to do with Superman? What were Bob Kane and Bill Finger trying to do with Batman? Uh, move forward from that, but always go back to the source material. Storyteller91 wants to know what my favorite Batman comic is. Easy answer, Detective Comics number 500, a story called To Kill a Legend by Alan Brennert and Dick Giordano. Best Batman story I've ever read. That Boy 1996 wants to know for you what is the appeal of the DC Universe compared to other fictional universes? Well, besides the characters, it is the way that these characters in this universe are inspirational to other people, to other ordinary citizens, in a way that characters in other superhero universes or comic book universes aren't necessarily. That is not to knock other universes, but I think what makes the DC Universe special is that these characters are iconic and the general public realizes them as such. I think that makes them very special. Okay. Felix Leiter wants to know, when writing a book with multiple characters like Justice League of America or Legion of Superheroes, how do you approach it to make sure each character's voice is unique and authentic to their history, personality, and perspective? The first answer is read them for 50 years, like I have. <laughs> Fall in love with them when, when you're six and then think about them every day for the rest of your life. That is my key. Uh, but beyond that, it really gets back to go back to the original characters, go back and look at their individual appearances, and then in terms of weaving them together, my trick is when I'm writing a team book, if I'm writing a specific adventure, I drill down on like one or two, pick like two characters that don't normally interact and focus your story a little bit on that. You know, make that the, the point of view of the story and then you, you obviously all the characters play a role, but you know, what do Oracle and Martian Manhunter have in common? What do they have different? What makes them a team? How do they work together? Aquaman and Wonder Woman, how do they function just as the two of them? What are, how do they complement each other? That's the kind of thing that will bring out the character voices and show you that they are distinct and different. All right. Farsender wants to know what, in your opinion, makes the Superman Batman relationship dynamic work so well? It's mutual respect. It's the fact that, as I said in Kingdom Come, when you scratch the surface of Batman, he's like Superman, he's somebody who doesn't want to see anybody else die. And that is the core of their, of their binding. I personally, my interpretation, and your interpretation may vary, my interpretation is they've always worked better as friends. If for no other reason, not because of nostalgia, but because of the idea that Batman is the ultimate strategist, well, there's no strategy in making an enemy out of the most powerful human being on the planet um, or any other superheroes. I think, you know, Batman is not one to sit around at the Christmas party with eggnog. I get that. But at the same time, I think that there is percentage beyond the fact that they're just good people. There's a, there's a percentage in Batman's mind where, like, why would I not want to have a good relationship with these other characters, especially Superman. All right. Superman fan 1701. Hi. As you were crafting a story, what are some things that you do mentally to avoid any roadblocks that may come about during your writing process? Dude, writing blocks, that is the process, right? It's just finding your way through those blocks. It is when it comes to being stuck, when it comes to being stuck on a point, when I got a place in my story where I just can't figure out what happens next, no matter how much time I spend staring at the ceiling, uh, I then step back. I step back and go to the place that the story was really working. And then just turn left. Abandon all my plans, abandon all my preconceptions, and just turn left and see where that leads me. It might lead me to some place more exciting and more spectacular, but my feeling about being blocked when I'm writing is that that is my subconscious's way of telling me, stop, you're going the wrong direction. I want to keep you from continuing down this stupid road and steer you a different way. The Terrific Toy Man wishes to know, I know you have been dying to write Superman for years, true. My question is, which one of his villains would you say you're most excited to write and why? When the opportunity arises, 
I think Brainiac. I think Brainiac. I mean, yes, there's been a lot of good Brainiac stories told and a lot of good Brainiac stories upcoming, from what I understand, from the Superman office. But there's something about Brainiac that I think is unique. I think that he is the only villain that Superman is legitimately afraid of. That That is, he has an intellect far beyond anything. And he is basically, he is, he is, he is the symbol of Krypton in a sense because of his relationship to Kandor, because of his relationship to the Jor-El and the explosion of Krypton and so forth. But he's a symbol of Krypton without any humanity at all. Whereas Superman is a symbol of Krypton with humanity. And Superman just doesn't know how to deal with that. There is always something about Superman's villains that on some core level, even Luther, he finds in his mind, he thinks this person can be redeemed somehow. There is something in this person's soul that can be kindled into something good. I think he thinks this of the parasite. I think he thinks this, this of, of Mongol. He thinks of this of, of all of his foes. But there, that isn't the case in Brainiac. There's just no soul there to be kindled into something good. And Superman doesn't know how to deal with that. Okay. Vroom says, do you have a favorite Superman action figure? I, no, because if you came to my place, it would look like Planet Krypton. This is my apartment looks like a shrine to all things Superman. And so it would be like picking my favorite child at this point. If you looked at my place, you would understand. Archer 430 wants to know when you're writing, you frequently demonstrate an encyclopedic knowledge of the DC universe and you are able to effectively integrate it into your stories. Thank you. As a writer, is there a method you use to manage all of that information, or is it all pure recall? Dude, it is all pure recall. This is what happens when you read them all your life. BNY08640.60024 wants to know, what are your personal do's and don'ts for writing Batman and Superman as far as their characterization? Um, do remember, that they don't kill, that's top of the list. Neither of these characters kill. Uh, Superman in the case because he cannot afford to be seen as a weapon by anybody in the world because once he's seen as a weapon, then he becomes a threat. If he can kill this person, why can't he kill any of us? Batman's case, obviously. He doesn't want to relive the trauma of what happened to him as a child. That's the big do. The big don't is, um, don't get too slangy with them. I know that's kind of it. They have a way of speaking, both of them, that is not super formal, but they don't go into colloquialisms as much. They speak a little like your high school English teacher, I think. Batman0803 wishes to know, in Kingdom Come, Booster Gold is the owner of Planet Krypton. If memory serves, he doesn't make any appearances in the story itself, but I want to ask, if you were to have included Booster as a more prominent character in the story, which side would he take? Oh, good question. If he did take a side, do you think he would have survived to the end? First, secondly, second question first, no, he wouldn't have survived. Um, Skeets, maybe. Booster Gold, no. Uh, which side would he take? I think he would take Batman's side. I think his psyche is just a little more tuned to the the human side. He wants to be a superhero so badly, but in his core, he's just a regular Joe, and he knows that. Agent of Checkmate wishes to know, what comic has had the most influence on you as a creator, and what keeps driving your passion to continue to write for the medium? Easy answer. What comic has had the most influence on me? Action Comics 500. It is a book-length story that tells the entire story of Superman's life, and it is a story written by Marty Pasco, drawn by Kurt Swan and Frank Giamatti. And there is a moment in it that struck me as a reader, as a kid, that has always stuck with me. And that is when Superman, who's narrating the thing, explains the history of Crypto, his dog. And he talks to the audience that he's addressing, and he says, you know, I was so alone. There was no one else like me in the world. And then along comes crypto. And suddenly there's someone who understands what it's like to feel this way, what it is like to feel the wind in your face as you fly. 
or can or knows what the sound makes or and knows the sound that bullets make when they bounce off living flesh. God, that stuck with me. It's writing from inside the character. It is it is understanding on a fundamental cellular level. If you're this character, if you have these abilities, whatever they may be, what is your life like every moment of every day? Not just when you're punching stuff, but how do these powers and how do these abilities affect your the way you present yourself and how do they affect the way that you perceive the world around you? How do they filter our ordinary common experiences? You know, how does Superman see the world? How does Green Lantern see the world given given his abilities? That's the most important thing about writing these characters to me. What keeps my passion going is that's what's the most important thing about writing these characters to me. I just love diving in that pool. Back where I bow, wish you to know, if you could add one series or mini series to your world's finest line, who would it feature? I wish I could answer this, but there are at least a half a dozen, and I'm sure that one or more of them will be popping up sooner than later. There, I could, I could do a dozen. Um, I wouldn't do World's Finest Metamorpho as much as I love Metamorpho because there's no audience for Metamorpho comics, but maybe there's an audience for World's Finest Supergirl. Maybe there's a World's Finest Supergirl Robin audience. I don't know. These are not promises. These are just postulations. Keep your eyes open at your local store. David Alio 5.81316 wishes to know. You've had a wide category of books that have given you experience writing for individual characters and larger groups of characters. Which do you prefer to write and which do you think makes for the best storytelling? I think there are a lot of writers out there who can do amazing group stories and every once in a while I luck into a situation with Tower of Babel or something where I seem to be onto something, but at core I like writing the solo characters. I think it's just easier for me to focus in on one character and really do a deep dive, deep drill on that character and, and tell the story through that point of view. When you're trying to tell a story through several different points of view, it's very easy for that story to become a little complex and a little hard to manage for me. I can never be Stephen King. I can never tell a story with 14 different protagonists, which he does exceptionally well and which makes my head explode. Solo characters for me are the way to go. M. Perel 91 says, I love the issue where Robin and Supergirl go on a date. Thank you. By the way, that issue exists because in a cumulative 90 years of, ex of existence, I have never seen Dick Grayson and Supergirl have a conversation or share a scene, just the two of them. And that is why I put them together specifically. What other two characters would you like to write going on a date? That's a really good question. We're going to do some edits and come back to that because it, that one I don't have an answer for. Brubaker wishes to know, when writing for different characters such as The Flash or Batman, how do you approach each character differently? Again, getting into who they are, what makes them who they are, what their powers are, and how that influences how they perceive the world. But remembering that each of them has the same goal, which is truth, justice, but they may not always have the same methods by which to achieve it. And remembering this as you go forward. Side tip, when I'm writing a bunch of different characters, especially when I'm writing a team book, uh, my secret is to keep a bunch of trading cards on my desk. One for every character. So they're like chess pieces for me. This is how I manage to keep characters straight and different when I'm writing a team book. I, you know, I pull the characters forward and I've written a scene with Wonder Woman and Superman and Batman and then I realize, oh wait, Aquaman hasn't anything to do for a while, let's pull him over here. Now I got Aquaman over here and again, oh wait, I haven't done anything with Martian Manhunter, he's over here. So I've got to keep them all in view so I can always make sure that they always get some play. So I didn't really answer your question, but it's a bonus answer. ETR34 wishes to know, have you ever regretted a creative decision that you made with a character? Yes. And if yes, can you elaborate on which decision and character? I will absolutely give this to you. It was a long time ago, probably before you were born, when we did a Justice League crossover. This is way back in the 90s uh, with a character called Overlord. And it was the Justice League book, the Justice League International book, and the third Justice League book, Justice League Europe, or whatever it was at the time. 
And that was the story in which we wanted to give the villain, the Overlord, some giant impact to show what a badass he is. And the way you did that in the 90s was that you had them kill somebody. That was just the, that was the trope. That was the way it went. And I was the idiot in the room who said, Ice, Ice would be the one who would most affect the other Justice Leaguers when you killed her. Let's kill Ice. What an idiot. First off, bad call because she's a great character. And secondly, a, a choice that doesn't hold up very well today. I would not make that choice. In fact, I try to stay away from that whole killing characters thing as much as I possibly can because we do it so often in comics that it loses a bit of its edge and with most of these characters, you know they'll be back eventually. So where is the suspense? Oh no, I've killed Robin. Have you really killed Robin? Um, I think we got uh, this question about uh, which new characters you have going on a date. Great question. I think Martian Manhunter and Harley Quinn. I think Romantic Sparks would absolutely not fly, but I think of, of all of the human beings on Earth, I think that Harley would be the biggest mystery to Martian Manhunter. I think that the two of them are beyond the fact that he's an alien. I think even if you were an Earthman with that mindset, he'd, they'd, she'd still feel like an alien to him. I think that would be a great story. Thanks for joining us here for Episode 7 of the DC Community Creator Q&A series. And a special shout out to Ro Harper, who for that question, which was excellent, wins a signed copy of World's Finest Comics.